Hey, what's up? I'm Mark. He's Brian. Again, this is Mark 2.0, and we are thrilled to have actor Peter Dobson, Forrest Gump, Sing, Where the Day Takes You, uh, you name it. He's got a list a mile long. Thanks so much for coming on, Peter. Thank, Thank you, you for having me, fellas. Thank you for having me. Yes. Now, let's start off by talking about what it was like to start your career in such an iconic uh, decade like the 80s. <laughs> You're really, you're really dating me, aren't you, man? <laughs> no, well, I love the 80s. I'm sorry, I love hey, that. Is no, 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 my no, time, yeah, bro. Been this, I've, I've been in this game for for quite a long time. Um, yeah, Jersey Kid uh, came out here in about uh, 1985, <clears throat> and uh, you know, did the did the uh, the acting class thing and all of that. Studied for a few years, and um, um, you you mentioned Forrest Gump. Uh, which seems like ages ago as well. But uh, how that all came about is that I, um, uh, one of my first uh, big uh, breaks, I, I guess, would be uh, we did a very short-lived show called Johnny Bago um, that uh, we did in the early 90s. And uh, uh, it was uh, Zemeckis' venture into TV. Um, so getting that was a big deal for me. You know, got 24, 25-year-old actor. <laughs> and yeah. uh, it was basically based on this 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 mob guy who hijacks a Winnebago and goes from state to state and gets in all these madcap adventures and all of that. And uh, one of the episodes, we 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 kind of did a take, uh, I should say, a, a, a parody on Elvis, where my character Johnny Bago rolls into this uh, little uh, mobile village in South Dakota. Uh, he's on the lamb and. He finds a camera in the uh, in the Winnebago, decides to go out and enjoy the countryside, starts taking pictures and all of that. And he hears something rustle in the bushes and he takes a picture real quick and he takes it back. He develops it. And as it grows bigger and bigger, it's it's kind of like that famous Bigfoot picture, you know, with the, the, the thing is like walking in the woods and he blows it up even further. It turns out that it's wearing these gold sunglasses and he blows it up even further. <laughs> And it's Elvis Presley living in a trailer park, <laughs> hiding out. <laughs> yeah, it's so, so very long story short, we, 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 we well, uh, I, uh, my, my character kind of taught him to, 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 to talk to him into getting out of retirement and getting back on stage again. And um, we, we did a whole uh, Elvis thing with the music and all of that. And uh, when, when that show ended, about. Uh, Three or four months later, they they had called me and said, "Hey, Dobson, you remember that Elvis thing we did? Uh, well, we're doing a thing called Forrest Gump, and and uh, we, you you want to do Elvis?" And I'm like, "Well, the show's not picked up. Uh, yeah, I could use the work." And and uh, that that's how that all came about, man. Well, you know, it was cool because when I was refamiliarizing myself with your older work with you know, I I kind of forgot your face until I went back to 1989. Now I'm dating myself. And so I saw you and I'm like, I know, I, I know this guy so well. Right. I saw him in so many things. It, and, and then I was remembering, cause I didn't make the Elvis connection with that face. Your, 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 your work back then with Forrest Gump. I just knew that you had done Forrest Gump. And I'm like, well, right. well first of all, there's no way they can show his face. Cause everybody's going to know who it is. Right. Because you, right, you know, they kind of they kind of blurred it. You know, they kind of they kind of played with the focus and all that. I mean, what it, it's a two minute. It was a two minute gag. <clears throat> um, and there's a lot of talk. You know, to who did the voice and all that. The the bottom line was, uh, Kurt. They brought in Kurt Russell. He 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 did the talking and I did the singing of Hound Dog. So it was a combination of me and Kurt Russell. Kurt re Russell re recreating wow. a three minute gag in Forrest Gump. Which, you have the, the way, most. You have Elvis. You have Elvis's hair. Yeah, perfect <laughs> hair. Uh, right now, I mean, right now to this day, I mean, you can buy better hair. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, jeez, yeah, that, awesome, that. awesome. So, 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 I mean, sing. Uh, pretty much was that your first really big thing that hit a screen that was big. Did, did you mention the film? Uh, did you mention the film Sing? Is that what you said? Sing. Say? Yeah. Was that yeah. really your big uh, production? Yeah, that was my first, first one. That was my first yeah. big movie. Um, you know, again, so was that what that was where you uh 
your school had a, a song and dance thing trying to raise money for to, to save the school out of poverty right. or whatever. Yeah. Right. So, right. so you know, uh, I saw I saw yeah. young Lorraine Bracco there, and I was like, oh my gosh! See, I'm looking at it, I'm seeing everyone around you, and I'm like, look at the people around him. Yeah. What yeah, was it like back then? She she, she had, uh, you know, that was pretty good fellas. You know, she mm. she didn't she was. We were both upcoming in those days. Yes. Uh, and that was, you know, back in the days when they were still doing musicals, you know, the Footloose and Fame. In fact, the, the guys oh, yeah. that wrote and produced the film were uh, two From gentlemen. Those, right? and, you know, Craig Zane and Neil Marin. They, they did a lot of musicals in the 80s and the 90s. Later on, they, they did uh, Chicago. So they were, they, were, um, they were looking for this, you know, New York guy who could dance. You know, I, I went and auditioned like everybody else. And, um, you know, uh, it was a process, man. I had to take dance lessons and do all that stuff. And, and um, you know, in those days, we, we still had, they, they would, um, they still had a thing called screen test. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, had I had the screen test with, uh, with Lorraine Bracco. Oh. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, uh, you know, basically we had two left feet, but we faked it pretty good because we wound up doing it together. <laughs> Damn straight. So, so you had already gone to the Academy of Dramatic Arts and the Lee Strausberg, yes. right? Institute. Yeah, right. that's, that's correct. That was, wow. yes. Yeah. Both in New York. You got it. So you must've had great parents, right. To back you up and, uh, help. Yeah. You. Well, I, I had a very, I had a very supportive father. There's no doubt about that. I, I, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't too magic in high school. I, you know, at a very young age, I was fortunate you know, I, I know what I wanted to do and give it a whirl as a kid. I was always fascinated with movies and theater. Um, so the, the deal was, I, for, for, provided I, um, if I got in to the Academy of Dramatic Arts, I had to get a, uh, a part-time job. And, uh, uh, and my dad would take care of the cost of, of the school if I got in. And it worked out pretty good. Uh, and I studied there for uh, two and a half years. I didn't graduate, but I, I, I stayed there for about two and a half years and did a few. And then on weekends, I would do the uh, the uh, Lee Strasberg Institute, which was fantastic as well. And um, what is that actually? What differentiates that that, that place from the others? Do you figure? Well, the, the, well, you know, Strasburg was already long gone, and you know they, they talk about method and all that, but it, what it really was was just really. You know, not to bore anybody, but it was a lot of sense memory, um, and um, yeah, uh, they they really dug in. Um, hmm. You know, I, I had a lot of um, a lot of issues as a teenager, <laughs> so uh, it was uh, going going to the Lee Strasberg Institute was definitely good therapy for me, and um, I, I really got a lot out of it. And then um, after that whole uh, venture in New York, uh, I came out to LA in uh, 84, 85, somewhere in there, and you know. Um, Gosh, I guess there is a lot of self-examination in acting. <laughs> I never really considered that, you know. But you so, got to be a, you you got you got to be a nut to be in this business. <laughs> Trust yeah. me. So you had Trust two me. big productions right at that time. Last exit to Brooklyn, right, Jennifer yeah. Jason Lee. Oh man, yeah, that was yeah. that looks like a rough film. Well, I, yeah, <laughs> man, that, that was uh, that was uh, that was an experience in itself. It was, you know, originally. Uh, Last Exit to Brooklyn was to be uh, directed by Martin Scorsese. Oh my god! Uh, he had ups he had ups in the book first. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> and um, uh, then he, uh, he, he at that time he th there was a book called Wise Guy, which was later Goodfellas. So he kind of juggled the two. And the reason I know this story, I had actually auditioned for Goodfellas uh, uh -huh. while I was uh, filming Last Exit to Brooklyn. So I got to meet Martin Scorsese. Um, and he had told me the story about uh, how he was originally going to do it. Basically what happened, he chose to do Goodfellas, um, and uh, a German director named Uli Eitel uh, came in from Bavaria Studios out in Germany, and they optioned the book. And, uh, well, I'll tell you, that was an experience I'll never forget, man. And that, that was, uh, you know, yeah, you, you said Jennifer Jason Lee was a very young Sam Rockwell who had like four lines in the movie. Wow. Um, everybody was just starting out. You know, and um, cool. It, it, it was, um, yeah, man. It was a hell of an experience. We shot it out in Red Hook, Brooklyn. Um, There's a lot of gang wars going on with uh, 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 I forgot what they were called, uh, but there there was a lot of gunfire. I remember that. So 
every hour or so, we all we all had to go in a garage, wait till the gunfire ended, and then go back out and start shooting again. Oh my god! We, we yeah, we were really on location on that day. And uh, people don't know how it was back then. It got pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like that now. Come to LA. I mean, it's like. Uh, oh, I love it. It uh, is getting bad. We just made a big giant circle, man. Everything's crazy again. Oh, you sure yeah. as hell did. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. But uh, wow. the funny thing about Last Next to Brooklyn, man, is that when uh, they screened it uh, back in 1990, a lot of people they they they, uh, they you know invited a. Uh, um, the general public to it. Most of the general public thought it was going to be like Greece. Hmm. Uh, they, they had no idea that this movie was going to wind up, you know. Oh, that's hilarious. Just Wait, boring. how'd they get that idea? <laughs> <laughs> and, people started, and I'll never forget it, man. People started running oh, out of the man. theater and uh, and Uli Idol, the director, was like, this oh. is exactly the reaction I, I wanted. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> He didn't. He didn't hold back on that. And, I, and and for my money, I th I think it's Jennifer Jason Lee's just it's her most brilliant performance uh, is in that film. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. She was so terrific. And you've even done what the Marrying Man. That was kind of more comedy, like oh, yeah. Kim Basinger, uh, Baldwin, uh, Elizabeth Shue, Paul Reiser. <clears throat> yeah. I think uh, I saw. Um, gosh, Someone at the end, I saw doing a little cameo. Who was that? I'm trying to think of it while you're talking. Who wasn't in that movie? Gee. Uh, well, you know, this was this was before all the craziness with Alec. <laughs> there was a wow. That, I wasn't going to say that, it. That's wow. the movie. Yeah, that's the film he met Kim Basinger on. They 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 fell very much in love during the course of that oh. that production. Um, uh. We had a hell of a time making it. Um, there was uh, you know it was uh, Neil Simon. Um, uh, and uh, that was a Neil Simon. Wow, that was a Neil Simon film. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. And uh, uh, buddy, the, the the last we had making that film. So because and, of uh, the uh, relationship, I'm sorry. Or you had, you ran into problems like what? Because if they had like a, a well, there was a lot. Film? Well, what happened during the movie? There was a lot of bad press while while making it. Uh, oh. I, I never I I never experienced it, but apparently. Uh, Al Alec and Kim were, were were always in the trailer, I guess, getting it on or something. Yeah, there we go. Oh, wow. uh, I, I don't know. I wasn't there, but but uh, the, the the times that we worked together, uh, that that was the funnest film I've ever worked on. Uh, wow. it really was, you know, I thought so I saw young. Will Ferrell at the very end or something like that in a weird clip or something. Uh, well, actually, Will you know? Ferrell, his was movie, that was a movie called Drowning Mona. Oh, oh right, that's oh, where yeah. I saw. I think him. that's what I think that's yeah. what you're thinking. That's of. it. I got that it. Was the Danny movie, DeVito, by the way. Ben Mill really? Yeah, wow. that was the first film. Was you know what? It's funny. By the way, everybody, you can watch that one free on YouTube. And that has Danny DeVito, Ben Midler, Neb Campbell, Jamie Lee Curtis, and other people who weren't even listed. Yeah, including well, yeah, including Will Ferrell. I was like, wait, what's his I, name? And, and, and that's why I lost it. Uh, 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 that was a wonderful character actor named um, William Fickner. I don't know if you know who that is. Yeah, that was one of his first films too. I mean, you know, again, I've been I, I've been I've been around for a long time, man. Yeah. <laughs> and, well, uh, man, I just of, wanted to celebrate yeah. your past because I was oh, there yeah. and I enjoyed yeah, it really. thoroughly. And you know, I'm just one of those like like yeah, like Goodfellas, the movie. I'm just like you know, those, those kinds of movies. That's why I like you know the. Uh, um last exit to brooklyn and so uh just just great job you know and so um i'm sorry mark i'm kind of hogging the guest no that's you, fine i was going to mention uh plain clothes. Let, let's let's take you back what about plain clothes george went what was it robert uh from robert uh, stack robert yeah. stack yeah robert, 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 robert stack, stack. Uh, I would pick his brain during lunch about him making uh, you guys are probably far too young to remember but he Back in the days, uh, he had a show called The Untouchables, which was a TV series. Um, you know, before the movie and all that, the, the, uh, Robert Stack uh, in the early 60s uh, had a, t a very successful TV series called The Untouchables, which was exactly I remember what well, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I, I grew up well, I grew up in New Jersey, and that was always on repeats every uh, Saturday afternoon. So I was obsessed with that TV show. So... Uh, getting to work with him was was a blast. I mean, naturally, I loved him in airplane and all that. But well, that's why he was so great because in the Untouchables, he was that 
perfect, you know, solid, dependable, factual character, you know, and to turn that to comedy was just like a brilliant move too, you know, so he, yeah. he just killed it in both areas, He's just like perfect. Yeah, I, 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 actually, that was my first film, that that was the first uh, film I ever did was, uh, oh, that makes sense. I mean, I'm, <clears throat> excuse me, Yeah, I'm surprised you guys even know about that movie, um, I mean, it's a, it's, 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 <laughs> you, you gotta really dig that one up to find it but, uh, <laughs> Where, yeah i think i need i rented it on youtube well, you, yeah, I'm, sure, I'm, I'm sure yeah. you, i'm sure youtube uh has it like they do everything else yeah <laughs> but uh yeah that, that that was that was that was the first movie man that was the first movie so and yeah. i remember uh back in the day we used to listen to offensive people like oh i don't know andrew dice clay who i loved you know <laughs> oh I'd that like to was see great. him do I some of his own routines too. right now that would be uh, like hilarious you know, and, it, uh, uh andrew's a buddy of mine please uh, talk talk about uh, him going back to sing he was going to play my brother in that oh, in no, fact shit, we, no way. i screen tested with, that's where i met dice and um what happened was he was he was all set to do it, uh, and of course this was during Dice's heyday. This was uh, 1989. I mean, he he was uh, you know a year later. You know, he went to Madison Square Garden. You know, in those days, it was like a rock concert. It was like seeing Led Zeppelin. Oh. Dice broke yeah. all the, broke all those barriers. But what yeah. happened was uh, they they decided uh, to shoot the movie for tax reasons in Canada. We shot 90 yeah. percent of that movie in in Toronto, and they. They uh, they went for a local act, Canadian actor instead to play my brother instead oh. of Andrew uh, because the, the the unions changed and all that and scheduling and all that happened and uh, but uh, that that's where I first met Andrew and uh, I've worked with him a few times over the years uh, he. he He's a character, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, How has he wow. changed over the years? He was such a just just a full throttle back in the day, and oh, yeah. uh, you know, you know, we all mellow a little bit. What's important to him now? Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, during all the cancel, you know, all this stuff with comedy, you know, Andrew's still, you know, tours the country and does casinos, and um, he's never changed his act one bit. Uh, you know, he's got yeah, a huge good. following, and uh, it's good to see a lot of comedy. Uh, coming back, uh, Roseanne Barr's got who I'm a huge fan of uh, has got a thing coming on um, Fox Nation that I can't wait to see. Uh, you know, the, 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 this cancel culture in our industry is 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 really polluted our industry with so many wonderful people. People make mistakes, not mistakes, whatever it is. Um, it's great to see that a lot of comedians are finally taking center stage again and not having to worry about. Uh, being canceled, you know, um, you know, as as I mentioned, and as you guys mentioned, I, I've been out here for a long time, and I've never seen anything like the past four or five years with uh, with all this craziness that goes in in our business. I mean, we're you know, we're just entertainers. We're not politicians, and they're you know, we're just stupid actors, man. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and 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 yet, people's careers were getting destroyed for something they said or you know 15 20 years ago like it, it's still hard to wrap my mind around some of this stuff but um you know it's good to see a lot of people are starting to bounce back again you know this friggin' pandemic is you know is really i think made a lot of people crazy yeah <laughs> and uh yeah but yeah but things are starting to bounce back uh uh, once again and and uh, they're making some great movies i just uh, uh, last night i just watched the uh, a remake actually of uh, All Quiet on the Western Front. I don't know if you guys seen that. It's on Netflix right now. It's superb, oh. by the way. Are you familiar oh, with that? Film? That does sound familiar. Yeah, it's, what, called, what, it's what, all what's quiet the original? The so it's a remake. You got huh? it. It hmm. was uh, it was originally done. It was the last uh, actual. It was the last silent film ever made. It, it went hmm. all. This was in 1930, wow. uh, and it won the Academy Awards and all of that. Uh, and then all this time later, this, uh, I can't remember the director's name. They did one a few years ago that was interesting too, uh, called 1917, which is. Oh, oh that but, killed me. 
Oh, that was yeah. so good. <gasps> it was it was like all done in one take. Did you notice how they made uh, 1917? Like there was I all didn't. One, I was didn't all... notice. It had to be told to me later. I was like, wait, what? What's going on? Yeah. And they're like, doofus. Think... That's what it was all. It was all one take. I'm like, really? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It was. It was very interesting. I mean, it's it's a it's a digital effect that they do, but the film, the I'm sorry, the, the camera never cut. It never it never cut. It was like one giant master for two and a half hours. And that was a very interesting film. Oh, I was just blown away by the film itself. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this one that's out now, uh, All Quiet on the Western Front, for my money, the best film of the year. Bar no one remade that yet? Wow, how'd they miss that? This is going to be great. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, check it out, man. Okay. Yeah, check it, I mean, wow. I, I'm a bit of a cinephile, so, you know, uh, um, you know, I was, a big, I was a big fan of Stanley Kubrick, and there was a film called Paths of Glory with Kirk, with, uh, Kirk Douglas, which was also about World War One and the trench warfare. You gotta think it, man. I mean, World War One. These guys knew they were gonna. When, as soon as they blew the whistle, these guys would come out of the trenches, knowing they were gonna get shot. It, it, and and and, and uh, this movie, All Quiet on the Western Front, certainly displays all of that. I really recommend checking it out. It's brutal. Yeah. People should be reminded, though. You know that first oh, time. Yeah. That first time I saw Saving Private Ryan, I'm like, I felt oh, like God, somebody yeah, exactly. punched me or something. Yeah, buddy. You know, it actually has that 19, uh, uh, All Quiet on the Western Front certainly has that vibe. I mean, who can forget the first 30 minutes of Save It Private Ryan? I mean, mm -hmm. that, that, it, didn't, it, didn't, it didn't get better than that. Uh, and then, it, but it made yeah. you stop for Mind a block. second and go, <laughs> God, I never put myself down there on that beach. I mean, you Can see you imagine, it. buddy? Oh and, and, and remember, God. pal, these guys were 17, 18, 19, 20. Oh, yeah. There's a reason they're called the greatest generation in the world, and and it's a shame that you know. Again, I'm not going to get political, but yeah, but you know, we're going to we agree those with you. The, those yeah. are the days when men were men. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah we understand I know exactly fully. what you mean. We understand you, you fully, and we about. agree. And what happened was, I think, without saying anything like you know political, it's a, a technology has hit us like nuclear power it's so powerful that can literally sh reshape the people i've never seen a technology with this kind of power i mean right. since television mm -hmm. since television itself so we called it the idiot box in the 70s for a fucking reason right because you don't listen to that thing because it's trying to sell you something and manipulate you you dumbass That's and right. it got it got to the tenth power now, and we're like, "Oh shit, kids, wake up, wake up, wake <laughs> yeah, up, man, wake up!" And they're not waking yeah. up. They're not and we have five up. channels. I think there was, there was uh, uh, only five channels. You know, so I've said it on this show many times, Peter. <laughs> I come from the time before cable. <laughs> exactly. Before cable. Yeah. yeah. We we That's talked right. at school about. It the yeah. fonts, okay? Yeah. We're learning truly <laughs> yeah. yeah, Yeah, the classics. H HBO was like a luxury. If you, uh, you know, they right. did, oh, they, yeah, they did I remember HBO. Those you, you had to order this box and put it on top yeah. of the TV and plug yeah. it in like a video game. Yeah. And so I, I remember the first time we got HBO, which was like, you know, so outworldly. You know, that was our, our other channel. And, and by the way, that's where I discovered, um, as a kid, that's where I discovered most of the uh, movies was the old HBO uh, from the HBO box. And um, uh, uh, I, I remember coming across a film, which is still my favorite to this day. I say this all the time. It's called The Wild Bunch from Sam Peckinpah. When I saw that movie, it changed my life. It changed my life. And, and that's what really got me into theater and wanting to... Uh, you know, you know what was cool about early HBO? You could watch an old movie, even in old movies, more importantly, watching the HBO because there was no commercials. Because that was so distracting. No, and it wasn't so edited long. either. You, you, you would right. get out of it. You would get out of it. Just the distraction of the commercial. Cereal, yeah. toy, car, you know, oh, oh, well, you let it go. But if you get into those, I remember when my dad's like, did you enjoy that? I was like, yeah. Right, right. Wow. <laughs> yeah, watch this then you know and and yeah. watch this you know my dad was like here's he like theater movies and stuff like that you know and mm -hmm. so, so you're pretty you're, much you're, you're, lived the life i always would love to have lived <laughs> yeah you're a real cinephile huh yeah 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 my me and my dad we like that you know early computers and and just stuff like that you know new technology the earliest cable boxes my dad had to have it yeah. you know yeah. you know just to, it only came 
on at night sometimes yeah. you know, in the okay, early, early days. Yeah. yeah, all so right. Cool. So you're, you're, yeah, you're my age. So exactly. You, you remember exactly. all this stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. When I saw you back then, I'm like, I, I know him. Like, I've seen him a <laughs> yeah. hundred times. Because when I saw you on that TV with the antennas on it, I, re I remember you. <laughs> and <laughs> MTV, you too. Know you, you know what happened You're on MTV, the too. There was, some, top, there was uh, just typecasting back video. then. And you were... If there was a Fonz in real life, dude, you were like so handsome. I'm telling you, you were. It, I mean, it, the, uh, Henry Winkler's character was this overblown, dramatized. He's like the most amazing character, the most amazing yeah. guy. But if there was really a guy that would epitomize the, the young, handsome Italian, it was, uh, it was it, you. It, it, did you ever see? Um, you, you know how it became the Fonz? You know, he it came from a movie called Lords of Flatbush. Do you oh, remember yeah. that movie? Uh, yeah, I don't know that the specifics. With, uh, what do you that know? Was with Henry, yeah, uh, Stallone. Oh, and, and he was in that. That's right. Yeah, he played one of the guy. He played one of the the, the greasers. That, that was uh, 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 Henry Winkler, uh, Sylvester Stallone, oh. actor named actor named Perry King. You are reminding and, uh, me of so many cool things. Yeah, I, I, I you know, again, I'm a film nerd, man. I, I, I see cool. everything. But that's that was kind of as if you if you see that film it was made in 1974. Um, it's he's the font. Uh, he wasn't going yay and all that, but that's that's how he wound very up serious doing, uh, fonts. Yeah, and all <laughs> yeah. Of that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I remember now. Yeah, the jacket, yeah. the white T-shirt, or something close to that. Yeah, wow. Richard Gere was going to do it, but him. Was, this is true story. Richard Gere was going to do it too, um, but uh, him and Sly got into a, a fight. <laughs> wow! No, yeah, they got into a, yeah, they got into a fight. I think it was over fried chicken dripping in. This, from what I understand, it was like dripping in Stallone's car. And oh. so I said, hey, eat that outside, and and next thing you know, they went at it, and uh, Richard Gere wound up not doing the film, and they replaced him with Perry King. There's some useless knowledge for you. <laughs> history is altered forever wow wow Over some chicken. but richard Gere did okay man he, he did oh he did well for himself oh wow yeah man. oh well i could sit here and reminisce all day with you my friend we we're just sure. like from the same time i'm sorry mark go ahead no I, I was just gonna say how many times have you portrayed elvis because you've done it several times i saw you on hawaii 5 you know uh, protecting the oh, God, yeah. Wow, that did um, snowball. <laughs> or, or it really did. Have a ripple. What did you played guys, everything. Hey, what did it's you, not uh, like you were typecasted. You played everything. What did you, what did you guys think of the, the new Elvis movie? Did you like it? I was going to ask you. That's right. Earlier, I was thinking, I have to ask. I didn't see it. Do you recommend oh, it's it? terrific. Well, yeah. I, I remember coming across Austin Butler when I first saw um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I was with some mm -hmm. friends of mine. Uh, and he came on the screen. I said, "Who is this kid? Uh, did you? Did you? There was a Tarantino film, uh, I think, back in 2019. And Austin Butler came on the screen. He played Tex, you know, what part of the uh, Charles Manson group? I don't know if you ever saw the film, mm -hmm. but when he came on the screen, I said, "This kid's going to be huge." <clears throat> and um, you know, naturally, uh, you know, he wound up doing Ellis. I remember reading about it, and I said, "Boy, all, all the actors." They they really chose the right one. I thought he was phenomenal, man. I, I just thought he's just. I mean, just. Uh, I, I'll, I'll be damned if he doesn't get the Oscar for it. Really? Um, yeah, I, I've you know my younger days. Yeah, I, I mean, I I played him a, a Elvis a few times. Um, the, the 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 one where I I really enjoyed was a film, it's a little film called Protecting the King. That. Uh, not many people know that Elvis actually had a stepbrother. Uh, after Elvis's mother, that. yeah, after Elvis's mother died, um, you know, he was in the army, and she, in, in 1958 she passed away. And Vernon uh, got married, remarried very quickly. And Elvis, as you can imagine, was not too happy about that. Uh, you know, Elvis was a real mama's boy, so he was not happy about his dad having um, a new wife so suddenly. But she had. Um, she had two sons that Elvis actually was very fond of. Uh, one of them was named David Stanley. So he actually grew up with Elvis. Um, and uh, uh, by the uh, early 70s, became part of the Memphis Mafia. Um, Whoa. And, and David uh, wrote this, wrote, directed this film back in 2008 or nine, something like that. Uh, it was like a docudrama. Um, so th 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 that's, that's the one I'm most proud of. Uh, it's not your typical Elvis movie at all. It's 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 through the eyes of him. 
growing up with him uh, about his big brother elvis that's interesting i'm yeah. definitely gonna, i i'm definitely interested i've seen all kinds of new things like how that he was fighting a medical issue and medicating himself, trying to get past it, all kinds of stuff, you know. And then I saw this new movie that takes that kind of perspective with him and his manager, Tom Hanks, right? That's I mean, correct. Yeah. yeah. That, there's that's a, well, there's a, a lot of irony there. In, in the film I did, Tom Hanks plays young Forrest Gump, and then young Forrest Gump oh. becomes... Colonel oh Tom Parker God. in the new Elvis movie. That uh, is so funny. What, what I loved about the the, the the new movie is that they they don't get into all the you know, they don't get into the drugs and all that. They 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 tap on it a little bit. Yeah. Um, you know, I had to actually see to the dwell movie on again. it. It's absurd. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I had to see the movie twice because first I you know I know Baz Luhrmann is a very vivid director with his montages like Moulin Rouge and all of that. So I I didn't quite understand what i just watched i'm like this wasn't like the movie i was expecting with uh I, th I think the best elvis movie i ever saw was when kurt russell played yes elvis. and uh, thank it you was, it was a tv movie called oh elvis. gosh it was so good yeah it was and, huge and, uh, at the time I and mean, kurt russell was just like you know and he'd been in so many things you know but he was just still the perfect guy to do it yeah but, was. I, but I was saying after, but I went back and I watched it again because I, I, I had a problem. You know, they're playing rap. I'm like, what's with the rap music and all of this stuff? So I didn't, I didn't, it didn't register, but I had to see the movie again. I watched the movie again and I absolutely, absolutely was blown away by, it. uh, by, by, uh, particularly Austin Butler's performance, just wow. absolutely blown away by it. Wow. Yeah. They should somebody should hire you in the future to direct some kind of thing like that. I think you would well, be have the perfect. Well, I am eye. directing. I, I am. I am directing. I, Do I'm, tell, I'm, please. Yeah, yeah well, I, 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 I'm. I'm. I'm mostly behind the camera now. I, uh, we're, we're, me and uh, uh, my producing partner named Mark Klebanoff, we're 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 prepping to do a film in the fall of this year uh, called Asbury Park, which is kind of a tip of the hat to the outsiders. And a film, oh. uh, American Graffiti. It's a real throwback movie, very Americana. Uh, like it's not it. about Bruce Springsteen. I mean, he he obviously was you know in the area, but there was a big cruising scene called the Circuit in Asbury Park, New Jersey. And I remember they're going there on weekends and watching this, and you know all the muscle cars coming down the boulevard and everything. Uh, and um, this is what we're prepping to do in the fall. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Good luck with that. Please, if Thank you, you can, yeah, please come back anytime and talk about that. I'm sure that's going to launch well. We'll be keeping an eye oh, yeah. on that. Awesome. Um, yeah. Great, man. The only thing I wanted to ask you about that I didn't ask was the Frighteners because I'm kind of a fan of uh, not only the movie, but uh, the guys you were working with there, uh, uh, Michael J. Fox. Michael J. Fox. Right. Uh, and Jake Busey. I'm really, I love everything. He oh, yeah. pretty much everything he's ever done. Yeah. So uh, even D. Wallace Stone, I remember oh, yeah. from, uh, what was that? Cujo. Real oh, God, in Cujo. She was in everything. Oh, D. Wallace she... was in like every great 80s movie. Oh, yeah, she was. The uh, 80s yeah. horror film. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, yeah. And, and Peter even, Jackson, you know, that's why Peter Jackson uh, uh, put her in that film. He got a lot of, like, uh, you know, with John Aston. You know, from the Adams family, and um, 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 oh my God, my goodness, um, that movie was just so epic. Please tell me I'm anything forgetting about that. That's the, the guy who yeah. actually stole the movie was the guy who looks like Adolf Hitler in it. Uh, uh, Jeffrey Combs, forget me. <laughs> Jeffrey Combs and the Frighteners is is talk about a performance. My God, oh, yeah. And uh, and and Jackson had made that. You know, he was very. He was known locally, uh, all throughout New Zealand. He wasn't known in America yet. He had one, mm. uh, sem you know, semi-successful uh, film called Heavenly Creatures. Not many people saw it. I remember watching it. I'm like, wow, this guy's going to be, you know, huge. Um, he had, had had his trademarks all over it. But The Frighteners was really his American debut. And 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 again, that ties in with, uh, I had a, you know, back in those days, I had a nice run with Robert Zemeckis. Um with Johnny Bagel and of course, you know, Forrest Gump and I did Tales of the Crypt that Robert Zemeckis oh, yeah. also produced. That was that's that was a, a Zemeckis mm -hmm. show along with uh, Joel Silver. So I had a, I had a nice run with um with uh, uh Bob Zemeckis and he had uh informed Peter 
uh, to take a look at me for the for that crazy role of Ray, which was kind of a a spoof on Biff from Back to the Future. It was almost the same, you know, relationship. In fact, when we were making the movie, Michael would uh, uh, the the John Aston the John Aston character plays a character called the Judge, but Michael constantly called him Doc. Doc. Oh. <laughs> and, 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 and my character oh, like, boy, that's funny. like this bully character kind of you know loosely based on Biff so I always say that the Frighteners is kind of like a twisted version of Back, Back to, to the, the Future, future. <laughs> and, 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 and guys you know that film when it came out it was a, it was a disaster no one saw it uh, initially they were uh, Universal was going to release it initially in, on Halloween Wow. Um, but they got very excited about the film, so they decided to up it to a summer release oh. against a little film called Independence Day. <laughs> yeah. uh, and the and the Frighteners got slaughtered at the oh, box office. <clears throat> what happened? The Frighteners, was, yeah, it was like what happened. Oh, go ahead. In those days, they had laser disc and all of that. And when the sure. movie made its way into DVD and 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 reruns on TV and so forth. The film is now a you know it's a it's a it's a cult classic. The, the, it's 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 Peter with a minimal budget, uh, and you can <laughs> see his early trademarks in Lord of the Rings and all of that. Uh, I, I remember one time we were having lunch and I asked him, "Well, what's next for you?" And he said, "Well, I'm going to do a movie called King Kong." I'm, I'm like, "Wow, wow. you're going <clears> to." <throat> he didn't mention Lord of the Rings yet. Um, so, uh, uh, as is as this the one with uh, you wound up doing Lord of the Rings first, then made King Kong. Um, and I listen, man, I, I, I've been very blessed working with the, the, the most insanely talented directors in the world. Um, and I, I'm fortunate that way. I, I worked with Michael Mann on a, a, a little, a little trivia for you. If you're familiar with the film uh, Heat, first Heat was a TV movie, mm -hmm. it was called. It was called L.A. Takedown. Same oh, yeah, movies, okay. same characters. I played the uh, Val Kilmer role. I played Chaharis. Um, wonderful what? actor, named Al, uh, wonderful actor named Alex MacArthur, and the uh, uh, actor who's now no longer with us named Scott Plank. He played mm -hmm. the Pacino role. If you ever come across this movie, which I'm sure you could probably see on YouTube, it's the same. With, right down. I've to the never heard of right. anything wow. like that. You can watch it on YouTube. It's the same movie without okay. the curse words, but it, it's the exact same script right to the end. Well, how does that happen? Uh, and the reason Michael Mann did that, he 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 knew he wanted to do a, uh, um, a uh, he knew he wanted to do it as a feature. You got to remember, Michael Mann had a little show called Miami Vice. <laughs> oh yeah, you were in that too. So yeah, I did. I that's how I for, Michael didn't now Michael didn't direct any of the episodes, mm -hmm. but he was very hands on. Uh, while uh, the, uh, when I, I met him while uh, I was doing the, I think it was the final season, and he happened to be there, and I had met him uh, while I was in Miami. Um, again, for a young actor uh, to 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 meet Michael Mann and work with uh, who I thought the coolest guy in the world was Don Johnson, and of course Philip Michael Thomas and playing the villain. Um, <clears throat> And then a year later, uh, they contact me, and and, and Michael um, was doing a TV movie called L.A. Takedown, and I wound up doing that. That's how long I've been doing this, guys? I've been doing this a long wow. fucking time. <laughs> that is awesome. Most, most of the movies people never see, are they go, oh, yeah, you were in that? Oh, you were in that? <laughs> oh, you are in that? <laughs> You're in Forrest Gump? Yeah, I played the sidebird in the shoe. I'm the blower in Forrest Gump. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, well, what's important to you now? I'm sorry? What's important to you now? I know you got that uh, thing coming out. Do you spend most of your time on that? Yeah. Well, I, I'm well. I'm uh, uh, we're currently in uh, probably our seventh draft of the script. Uh, we just I can't say anything right now, but we attached a very big star uh, uh, just a few weeks ago to the project, which is helping us a great deal. Um, I, I've uh, again, we're, we're just talking about directors. What what I was going to say was that working with these directors inspired me so much. It was kind of like going to film school, uh, particularly when I worked with Peter Jackson. Um, I, I never left the set. I watched his every move and was just so inspired by this, this man um, and the way he used the camera and so forth. Uh, and, 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 and with Michael Mann, uh, the same.
so uh, I always had that bug in me. Uh, so a few years ago, I started making some short films. I one in particular, which you can watch on YouTube, called White Mule, which is basically a a, um, a tip of the hat to Smokey and the Bandit uh, and the and the Twilight Zone. And I we took that short film all over the world. It, it, it won Best Short Film just about in every uh, festival it was at. Uh, I'm very proud of that movie and 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 um, had this other idea rolling in my head for a feature, which I just mentioned, called Asbury Park. Um, and uh, we're we're uh, we're very excited about about this film. You, you 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 don't see too many films like this anymore. You know, it's like like Stand by Me. No, uh, I was just talking about that to my kid the other day. You know, the, it, about simpler times. You know, yeah, I said you you would love it. Americana, you know. Oh my gosh. Um, there. You know. Um, uh, yeah. did you ever see The Outsiders? Do you, do you remember that? Oh, about a yeah. hundred times. I know. Oh, right. Same here. Do it for Johnny, you know. Right for Johnny. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, Mad Dylan. Wow. Yeah, the Warriors and the Wanderers. Uh, if you remember, you know Ken Wall. Do you remember that film, The Wanderers? These were all films from the late seventies, mm -hmm. um, teenage youth, and all of that. And uh, I just said, you know, it'd be interesting to bring that kind that genre back. Um, and that's what we're doing, man. We're we're we're, awesome. we're 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 we're, we're hopefully we're gonna turn a whole new generation onto uh, you know these times that you know people you know teenagers in those days. We didn't have cell phones, man. Yeah. You know our our. Our, our our communication was our banana bikes, you know, going out until oh, the, yeah. til the street lights came on, and and then you would go home after playing. Uh, you know, sure. our, our big thing was we played rollerball, uh, which was a movie with James Caan. <laughs> and, oh yeah, and we used to we used to play that in this in this uh, in this dead end circle. That's um, hilarious. You yeah, actually I, played I, I, rollerball. Yeah, a I, grim you know, looking at some death sport in the future yeah. <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> we were part of we were part of a generation that that used to go out and play, you know. Oh, yeah. You know, unfortunately, technology has ruined so many things now, and and kids are missing out. And I, mm. you know, not that I'm the old man lecturing anybody, but I, um, yeah. uh, there's a few people I know. Uh, one in particular who just had a little baby, and and uh, she told me she's never, you know, she's going to keep him away from cell phones, which I think is a great idea. You know, to to enjoy his childhood. You know, one hundred percent. Don't have to worry so about true. lights and all of that. Living these fantasy worlds, um, it's crazy, man. So again, that's you know, I hope I'm not dating myself, but I. Oh. You know, this we talk fun. about this all the time on this channel. I mean, yeah. we have people from our time here. Even we know Brendan Wayne, John Wayne's grandson. He's the Mandalorian, oh, wow. you know. Yeah, he, he's the guy in the suit most of the time that you see, you know. And we're talking about having BB wars in the street and you just yeah, leaving for days. Getting yeah. on your bike and just driving miles away, wow. you know. And never, you know, I've never seen that show. I've never seen them. I got to see. I got to check it out. I heard it's great. It's it's a Did good. John Wayne's John Wayne's son is in it. Grandson. John his grandson. grandson. Oh, his grandson. No kidding. Mm -hmm. But he does all the work, and then the other guy mm -hmm. gets the voiceover. Right. There's actually three guys that make up the Mandalorian. There's him, the stunt guy, and the guy that does the voiceover. Mm -hmm. And uh, he does, uh, you know, when he takes his helmet off. But in the show, the the warrior never takes his helmet off. It's part of his like, you know. Anyway. It's a great yeah, show you, know, you love. You, you know that whole show was shot in, in a soundstage. Did you know that? Oh, all, yeah. They, oh, we know. We've had a few guests. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, we, yeah. We're, I mean, we're, the, we're the, good the friends with those guys. A few of the those actors have talked yeah. with us. It's that fascinating. What? Yeah. The, they they talk about the twenty foot LED wall that just blows your mind. <laughs> you know, they love it. They absolutely Amazing. love it. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm gonna check it out. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. Check, yeah. I think you love it. Out. Yeah, yeah you cool. have to. Yeah, you know. But again, guys, you know, I'll tell you something, man. I look. I, I don't mind saying this. I, you know, there was a, a girl who was on it, and they, you know, they canceled her too. Um, oh, we and, know. Yeah, you know. And I look, man. You know, because yeah. of uh, what? Because she wasn't a Democrat. You know, I mean, I don't. I, I don't. You know, again, polit. The fact that politics has come in our business and has tried to destroy certain people is crazy to me it re, you know it reminds me back in the there was a thing called in the in the early 50s called the mccarthy era mm. and back in those days people were being accused of being communist and people were being yeah. blackballed and blacklisted and very much which happened in the past few years um it's kind of like that and um 
I know I can't remember her name. Um, lovely actress, Gina uh, Carano. G thank you, Gina yeah. Carano. Think, oh, yeah. you know, UFC girl, UFC girl. You know, and they and, the and most, you know, I, yeah, she's awesome. <laughs> she was a she was a big asset to that show, and then because I don't know what I and the really cast loved her. Was, we can attest. I don't know what was said. Her. Yeah. I don't, Again, know, I, I, I think we're playing with a technology like nuclear power. It's so, it's so violent if it's unleashed improperly. But I think we're like children playing with fire, and we're trying to contain it now. And hopefully, every action will kind of have an equal and opposite reaction, and we'll be able to contain this stuff. I mean, a lot of stuff is going on that behind the scenes. And a lot of people are saying, hey, come on now. This is unfair. Right. And yeah. fairness needs to come into this and be of paramount importance. Yeah. Once that I, happens, I, everything's going to be just fine. We just have oh, yeah. to get control of this before it gets out of hand. Right. I agree with you 100 percent, buddy. Politics and, uh, has no yeah. I mean, politics has no place in our in our industry. I don't know. I don't know why no. it, it became a, such a such a uh who cares if you're republican or democrat i mean who, who cares mm -hmm. um he eats their own then, you know, yeah I, I yeah i just you know and i think actors you know are they're not politicians unless you well, want to be ronald reagan who well there are very 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 powerful who, who, by people. the way was a great, great president oh yes. Reagan, best yes. president we ever had yeah she um, should hear brendan talk about him they uh yeah oh yeah yeah anyway yeah, his family he, he had you know people very close to you know these people you know and a, a, anyway uh you know, um, I, I could I could go on and on about this, but I, I think things will get straightened out. You know, um. I, I'm starting, like I said before, man, I'm starting to see a shift right now. There was a yeah, lot of other was, things going on. I mean, look what happened. Look, look what's going on with Disney right now. I mean, they 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 got into some of this uh, what you call woke stuff. I I don't know what that was about, but um, you know, they you know all this messaging and all of that which is fine i mean you know everyone has a right to make any kind of movie they want to but i think when you're starting to slam it down people's throats mm -hmm. and and uh, well, that and guy make, got fired and, didn't and, he? and make and making rules about filmmaking i mean people should make whatever film they want to make sure, films indeed. are meant to entertain mm -hmm. you know and of course they're they're going to be um, controversial or whatever but that's you know that's part of the the, the wonderful thing about filmmaking you shouldn't one one shouldn't have to worry about editing themselves because they might offend somebody that lives in a basement in Missouri. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's the, our industry. <clears throat> you know, again, I will just say this: check out the the All Quiet on the Western Front. It's filmmaking at its finest. It, it's it's it. It was just such a magnificent film. I just watched it the other night, and I was like, "Well, wow, boy." I would actually like to see it on the big screen, but it's on Netflix mm. right now. Wow. Wow. That's yeah. awesome. You know, I think just basically. I, I got to be careful. I got to be careful. The world is yeah. a highly controlled place. You know, many people are highly controlled in the world. And America, they want to bring that to America. And we don't like that. We're a bunch of cowboys. Uh -huh. Yeah. And so we're going to resist stuff like that, you know, but we have to teach our kids to resist that or. They don't understand what they've lost. They don't, they don't understand what they can lose. You know, you're talking about World War I. We're talking about saving Private Ryan, you know. Kids should see that and just go, God, people went through that. And they need to remember that you would not be here today, right now. You'd have Nazis in your face right. if they didn't exactly. go through that, telling you what to do. So, Peter, we're with you, brother, and we're going to be watching Great. everything you do. Oh, yeah. And anytime Great. you want to come back, you just come on back. And we'll do. Hey, we are honored. I can talk to you for two fans. more hours, bro. <laughs> I know. I, a great I appreciate time. it. You guys, great you, guys, you guys are a blast. Uh, thank, thank you so much for. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I hope I made some sense, sir. And not, everyone, just, <laughs> just edit the fuck out of this thing. Everyone, go on IMDb <laughs> and check out all of your films so you can get your three cent residual check. <laughs> right <laughs> i'm kidding i'm kidding peter do you want anyone to kept, like contact you do you do you reach out uh like do you give your instagram out or anything like that or you're just kind of like no, do I, I, i'm not yeah I'm not much of a social media guy i don't have a i mean i have an yeah. instagram i just throw pictures of like 
dolphins yeah. on it and stuff. But I beautiful, uh, right? <laughs> uh, but, uh, but Meditation I, oh, 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 music. I will close by saying I have a film coming out. Uh, two films coming out this year. Uh, both directed by a wonderful actor who's a director named Lewis Mandler. Uh, we uh, we were talking about Save a Private Ryan. The, the first one's called uh, Three Days. It's about the first uh, three days in Guadalcanal. I was just in Thailand oh. a few months back, and that that's coming out later this year. And another and another another one also set in World War II is called Operation Blood Hunt that I did with Rampage Jackson, by the way, UFC wow. guy who's wow. fabulous. So so uh, that that's my most recent stuff that's uh, coming out later this year. Everybody check it out. Um, oh, yeah. Everybody, Peter Dobson, he's done it all. Thanks for he being really here. He really has. Man. Thanks so much, Appreciate Peter. It. Pleasure, guys. Thank Take you care. so much. Great. Thanks. If you enjoyed this podcast episode, click on this playlist to watch even more. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Mm -hmm.